And we are back. Falcon Franchise. And if you're wondering what I'm doing in the standings, just quickly want to go over it. So as you can see, we have the football team at one. They've already clinched. There's only one game left, so I mean, they, they've done very well. Then you have the Packers. And the 49ers at three. Seahawks at five. So I believe any one of these three teams could get the two seed. Packers are guaranteed at least a three seed at max a two seed. Buccaneers at four. They've clinched the division. Now here's where we come into play. The Cowboys are the seven. The Cardinals are the six seed. We're the eight. And there's only seven teams in each conference that made the playoffs. So we need some help. We need to win against the Buccaneers. And then we need a Cowboys or Cardinals loss in order to do that. Now, I believe the Panthers do have a chance of making the playoffs as well, but I believe every other team has been mathematically eliminated. So we need a win or a Cowboys or Cardinals loss. So it isn't going to be the easiest thing. But I'd like our. I like to say that we have a chance. Now, Grady Jarrett got five tackles, two sacks, and two forced fumbles to earn him NFC Defensive Player of the Week. So, good job. Now, we're coming into this game as a potential season finale with players like Kendall Sheffield, Tyra Davidson, Justin Murray, Tyra Taylor, He Moser, MVS, Chris Manhurts, T.Y. Ty Ty Hilton, Linval Joseph, Mike Remmers, and Drew Locke. And potentially some more guys, you know, some guys on the practice squad we got to choose to bring back. So, this could be it. We won from Super Bowl champions. Now, it says Jamie Newman here, but I would assume the Buccaneers are going to be playing their starters. And I believe, yes, it is Tom Brady. Now, we are personally... I say short pass. I have Via Vea, that's pretty good. They also have Anton Winfield Jr., so now I personally think we need a throw with medium. We have our four focus players. I don't want it being Ben Jenkins. I want it being uh Chris Horn. I don't like the idea of throwing for 350. I think we'll go for throw two touchdown passes. And let's start training. Our defensive rank, we are number one. We are the best defense in the league, and we are the worst offense. Apparently. So, more than likely, the, the offensive coordinator is getting the boot. Whether it's after this game, or after, you know, next week, the week after, he's getting the boo at the end of the season, no matter what. We got no injur injuries. We do have some players we have to upgrade, though. No, Igba Nogane is the only one, so we might as well do this. He's going to be out for a week. I think we go hybrid. So, he will be back in time for the playoffs, but at the same time, that isn't a good thing. Because we don't even know if we're going to make the playoffs, so. Now, we're going to have some key players to bring back. Look at Raheem Mostert. He's one of the most important. I don't know if to bring him back or not because we do have uh, Cordell Patterson on a long-term deal, I believe. Well, he's going to be a uh, free agent here soon. But then we also have Steve Wesley. So, I don't know what to do. Now, Raheem Mostert, he didn't do very well rushing the ball. But passing the ball, he was, or not passing, uh, receiving the ball, he was pretty good. Then we have Drew Walk. He's not coming back. I'll tell you that. Uh, Marquez Valdez-Hitling. 
he shined when Chris Horn was quarterback. With Drew Locke, not so much. So, I'm quite intrigued to bring him back, depending on, you know, how much he wants. Because we do have guys like Alame Zacchaeus and George Claiborne. Well, George Claiborne, I think, is only on a one-year deal. But then we have a guy named Philip Madden, who you cannot see here. I drafted him pretty early, and I want him to kind of develop into a starter on this team. Then we also have T.Y. Hilton. He's not going to come back. He was just kind of a guy so we can potentially make a push. Defensively, we have Kendall Sheffield. He's the fourth cornerback. I don't know if we'll be bringing him back. And then, um, practice squad, there's only one real guy I want to bring back on the practice squad, and that is quarterback Cody Swain. You know, we're more than likely going to let Tyrod Taylor walk. So, there's no real point for him. We have a lot of freaking receivers, so we don't really need anyone. This kicker, though. Uh, we may want to keep on the practice squad another year, though. And Chris Wilcox doesn't seem like a bad option, either. So, he's the only guy I really want to keep. And by keep, I mean consider elevating him to the, the actual roster to be a backup or third string. Because we have young Oku, so we don't really need to elevate that kicker. Unless if he gets injured, which then it will be completely fine. But at the same time, do I really want to, you know have a pretty solid kicker on our practice squad when he could get stolen at any given time. As you might have saw at the bottom there, the Baltimore Ravens have defeated the Carolina Panthers. That does eliminate the Carolina Panthers from the playoffs. As the Buccaneers start out the 25 yard run, we see Tom Brady leading his team out to make another playoff appearance. He was in the playoffs last year. This may be Tom Brady's last year as a Buccaneer. Potentially his last year in the NFL. We don't know. Brady is a free agent though after this season. So I don't know if the Buccaneers are going to re-sign him or run him walk. And what the ordeal is. Brady. That pass is complete. That is Mike Evans. For a gain of 12 up to the 37 for... First down. Buccaneers, I don't really think have anything to play for in this. I think they have... I don't think they can go anywhere besides the four seed. That pass is complete up to the 36 for a loss of one. That is camera great. Besides the fact that they could bounce us from the playoffs. So, that and they could be playing the pad stats. As a huge hit on the play. I don't think they have Ron Gronkowski anymore, so... Or maybe O.J. Howard, I don't know. Third and nine, Brady. He's going to throw that, and that's going to be incomplete. The punting unit is out there on fourth down in nine. And the punt is away. It's going to be fair caught, but they're going to like not to catch it. And it's going to bounce to the back of the end zone. Let's go, as we see Drew Locke in his potential last game as a starter, 11 touchdown, 15 interception ratio, and he has only, I think he's missed three games, well he hasn't really missed, but he hasn't started free, so that is pretty, pretty bad, but they have started Chris Horn a few times, Chris Horn, he's looked very good when he has started. As that's going to be a huge gain for Moser. He's going to take it up to the 33 for a gain of 13. But Chris Horn has not won a single game yet. So they're get, they give the start as Moser's going to take that out. He's going to break a tackle and he's going to fight all the way up to cross midfield to the 48. Let's go, let's go, so let's go. another huge carry. I mean, Moser's trying to make a, a case for a, a payday.
Moser takes that up to the 47 now for a gain of one. So, they like to give Drew Ock a start because in this situation, they are trying to win this game. And Drew Ock has the better win history. And that's going to be took up to the 44 from Cordero Patterson. Bring up Burnt 5. Third and five, Drew Oxen with the throw. That pass is complete. I believe that is Olamide Zacchaeus, and he's going to take it up to the 36 for a gain of eight. On, That's going to be enough for a first down. Hand off to Mosher. To the 40, uh, 34 for a gain of two. Green Dallas Mosher, I may have been wrong. Man of motion. Going to be a handoff. Moser takes up to the 29. Just enough for five. And that's going to be up third and four. Drew Locke's going to look to throw. Checks it off to Patterson. Patterson's going to take it up to the, the fifth, the 11. Excuse me, not 15. It's enough for a first down. Two people in the backfield. Well, three if you count the quarterback. It's not going to be. It's a pass. Complete to Keith Smith. He takes it up to the one yard line. That's going to be second and in inches. They don't even get the first. It's going to be a toss outside to Steve Wesley. And that's going to go nowhere. It's going to be a loss of three. Heard him free now. Drew Ock is going to look to throw. He's throwing. And that pass is going to be intercepted. He's going to get trailed down at the 24. Number 37. Cannot quite see who the name is. That is now Drew Ock's 16th interception. First and 10 now from 24. That pass is complete. That is Mike Evans. Gonna fight his way up to the 33 for a gain of nine, and that's gonna bring up second and one. If New Orleans had a chance at the playoffs, they don't anymore after they, that loss. To play action, if it fooled me. That pass is complete. I, that looks like it's Scotty Miller. No gain on the play. Now third and one from the 33. To me, a handoff off the middle. And he does get it. He gets it to the 36. That is Keyshawn Vaughn. Keyshawn Vaughn, I believe, is their starting running back. I do not know about uh, Ronald Jones or Leonard Fournette. Actually, I believe Leonard Fournette is a free agent. Brady's looking to throw. He's going to throw it, and that's just going to be incomplete. There was a penalty, though. And it was holding on the offense. Donovan Smith to left tackle. Version 20, that pass is complete. To the 32, that is Scotty Miller. It's going to be second and 14 after a gain of six. Brady's going to look to throw. He fumbles that ball, and it's picked up, but they're going to say out of bounds. They count it as a turnover, though, but it's still Tampa Bay ball. Does he get that first? That is a close one. They're going to say no, fourth and inches, and Tampa Bay is going to challenge it as Dallas is currently tied 7-7 seven seven with Washington. going to be close they need it to the 46 and it, the rule was it was 45 and a half so it's going to be tough to overturn that this is a game about inches and they're going to say first down Tampa Bay interesting first they say the fumble was out of bounds and next they say 
He got the first. And Brady is airing it out deep. And that's going to be caught. That's going to be caught at the free yard line. For first and goal. It's a handoff up the middle. It's going to be stopped at the two. That's going to bring up second and goal. As Las Vegas currently leads Arizona 3 to nothing. Fights his way up to about the one and a half. And that's going to be third and goal. Two receivers out wide. A running back in the backfield. To hand off to the gut. And without question gets into the end zone. For the touchdown. Some very controversial calls on that drive. But not much you can do about it. Kick is up. And it's good. To make this score seven to nothing. Tampa Bay. It's going to be fielded at the 9-yard line, I'd say. It's going to be turned out wide. And a huge stop on the play by whoever number 28 is. Down at the 21. Looked like the, the Falcons were going to have pretty solid field position to start. But, nope. First and 10 now from the 21-yard line. Drew Locke is going to look to throw. There's pressure. He's just going to look to throw it away, avoiding the sack. Smart play. No, it wasn't smart, though. Throwing that interception on whatever it was, hurting goal. Nearly throws another interception. What is Drew Locke doing? And down he goes. That's Shaquille Barrett. You may see Drew Locke get pulled from the game here soon. I believe the Falcons would risk their playoff chances with rookie quarterback Chris Horn. Then the interception, you know, very risky throws. Drew Lock. Drew Lock throws these very risky throws, and at the moment, it doesn't seem like any of them are really turning out. First and ten from the forty. That pass is complete to Mike Evans. Across the field to the 45, they're going to say. I wonder if we'll see a team potentially trying to take Drew Hawk. Drew Hawk is a pretty decent overall. I believe he's like 73. It's like a 71 now. And that's another one that's going to go out of bounds. That's two fumbles now to go out of bounds. Second and six now from the 41. That's wide open. That's Keyshawn Vaughn to the 37. Did not get enough for the third down, though. It's going to be about third and one, one and a half. The Philadelphia wins. Philadelphia has a chance to make the playoffs, I believe. Brady's going to look to throw. He has a million options instantly. And that's going to be complete to number 17. It's going to be enough for a first down to the 19. That takes us to a two-minute warning. Didn't know they were going to choose to run another play. First and 10 from the 19. That pass is complete to Scotty Miller. That's going to be for the 14. Upset of what we see. Denver currently leads Kansas City. We do not really care about that game at the moment because we are more focused on this game. And then we're also focused on Dallas' game and Arizona's game. But at the moment, it doesn't seem like that game's going to really matter much for us. Because at the moment, we are getting not having a very good start to this game. With Drew Locke's costly turnovers. There's a timeout on the play. I believe that's by Tampa Bay. Don't know why Tampa Bay is calling a timeout there, but... Well, I mean, I do. Um, EA has it coded in to call their two timeouts around the one-minute mark if they do not score. Which, it's not a very smart thing, but... I mean, they have low expectations, so what do you expect? 
Gonna be a handoff up the middle again, and he's gonna be stopped, and Atlanta's is gonna use their timeout. Huge stop on the play. And the field goal unit's out there. The kick is up. And good. I believe that was a 21 yarder, if I'm correct. Tampa, ta oh, Tampa Bay leads 10 0. It's going to be fielded around the 8 yard line, but last time, and uh, similar results this time, the kick goes not very far. Let's go, baby. Let's Ultimately, we just let the ball bounce into the end zone so they get more time because these returns are not very good. Quick pass, and that's dropped by Marquez out of scaling. Arguably had, I believe, Calvin Ridley for a more open, but. There's Marquez out of scaling, holding on to the ball this time, and it's going to be a timeout. It's enough for a first down. Timeout by the Falcons. Marquez out of scaling's first catch of the game for 13 yards. Two locks going to look to throw. Pressure by Vita Vea, and that pass is incomplete, intended for Alameda Zacchaeus. Overthrew him. Too far to the left. He walks in with the throw. He's going to throw somewhat deep. And intercepted. That is Jamel Dean. You're wondering why I'm doing that? It's in case Chris Horn gets injured. I do not want Drew Locke back on that field. Drew Locke has arguably screwed this team out of so many wins because of his interceptions and costly time. Sam plays in the user last time out. Or across the field at the 44. It'd be a 61 field goal, yard field goal attempt. They have 18 seconds and no timeout, so they have to be careful with the play call here. Or maybe they just run the ball and hope they can get... They're going to run the ball. Are they going to get out there in time, though? They're going to elect not take the field goal unit out or spike it. They're just going to go with no time on the clock. That's going to do it for the half. As we have Chris Horn out there going to start the second half. Here's the first half. There it is. First half stats for those of you who are interested. If you're Dallas or Arizona, you got to like your odds now. We take a look around the league. We start with Baltimore and Carolina. Baltimore wins that game 21-17 to potentially make the playoffs. I don't know how it is in the AFC, but that went by Baltimore. and eliminates the Carolina Panthers. Next, we head to the Giants and Seahawks. Seattle wins that game 24-13 with the hopes of winning their division. They need a San Francisco 49ers loss. And last, definitely not late, we head to the Browns and Saints, where the Browns win that game to, I believe, make the playoffs. And that will, I believe, if they weren't already eliminated, eliminate the Saints from the playoffs. Week 18 here. A lot of playoff hopes. Or, you know, in the hand, or here's the Falcons when it comes down to throwing the ball short. Drew Locke trying to talk to Calvin Ridley, but ultimately has not thrown him the ball once and has thrown two interceptions. So, there's Tom Brady when it comes down to throwing the ball short. And that is going to do it for the halftime report. Atlanta will receive the ball to start the second half. It's going to be a deep kick. I'm going to elect not to return it. First and 10 now. It's going to be a handoff to Moser. Moser's going to take it outside. He's going to take it up to the 29 for a gain of four. The Falcons nearly had a thousand rushing yards between all their quarterbacks, running backs, and I guess a few receivers. Second and six. 
Chris Warren gets hit as he throws, and that's going to be incomplete. Bring up third and six. As Washington currently leads Dallas 17 to 10. That's going to be complete to the 34. That's going to be four for one in the punting units out there. If you're Atlanta, you should probably go for this. Because if I'm in this situation, I don't like the odds that we can stop Tampa Bay. As Las Vegas currently leads Arizona 10-7. to That pass is incomplete. So, at the moment, this is Atlanta's playoff hopes to lose. Both situations they're in are currently happening. All they need to do is win. Carry up to the 44 for a huge gain of 8. Wide open hole. Shockey only got 8. Third and 2 now from the 44. It's going to be complete to Mike Evans as he's going to take it upfield and he's going to take it out of bounds to the 36. That pass is going to get blown up. I believe that's Chris Godwin. I didn't know he was still on the team. There's a 53 yard field goal if they were to kick it from here, but they still have at least two more plays. That pass is incomplete, intended for Scotty Miller, I believe. Bring up third and 10 from the 36. Tom Brady's going to look to throw. It's going to be taken up to 28, and that's going to be a gain of seven. It's going to be short. And fourth and three, the Buccaneers are going to go for it. The Buccaneers are going to try and give themselves a huge advantage in this game. Brady looking to throw. And that pass is complete to Mike Evans to the 19. And that more than likely just ended the Falcon season. It's going to be a carry to 17. That's Keyshawn Vaughn. If you're a Falcons... You gotta like your future, though. You got a young quarterback who seems promising. But, seems like, you know, you couldn't quite find the next successor to Matt Ryan this year. But, you decided not to throw your quarterback into the fire instantly with a abysmal O line. Which is good. Third and four, Brady. It's gonna be a screen pass. That's gonna be complete, and he's gonna go back to the 21. Now, Arda. Are they going to go for it again? No, they're not. They're going to send the field goal unit out there. It's going to be a 38-yard attempt. And the kick is up, and it's good. Still a two-score game if the, the Falcons can, you know, start. Ultimately not going to return it. That went, didn't even hit the end zone. That went past it, so... Either they got a very good person on the kickoff or the wind is crazy. It's going to be a handoff to Mostert. And Mostert's going to take it up to the 39 for a huge gain. Mostert's been balling out lately. And the Falcons need 78 more rushing guards in order to reach 1,000 total. Mostert not having that much, but ultimately team effort. That's going to be a gain of one. It's going to be second to nine now. In the 40. Tavon Ridley's first reception. Hand off to Patterson. He's going to take it up to the 42. It's going to be third and seven. Third and seven from the 42. Chris Horn's going to look to throw. That's up to the 49. And they're going to say first down. Marquez Addison-Antling fought his way for that first down. And they're going to give it to him. Horn, the quick snap, and Kyle Pitts is going to take that up to the 40, uh, 42, they're going to say, for a gain of 9, they're going to say. Falcons got that ball off quick, century, in case the Buccaneers try to challenge that. 
It's going to be a handoff to Moser. Moser's going to fight his way up to the 40. It's going to be enough for a first down. That will take us to the end of the third. Where there's the third quarter stats. For those of you who are curious. And we head to the fourth quarter. Eight minutes remaining. Do the Falcons have a comeback in them to keep their playoff hopes alive? First and ten. Chris Horn's going to look to throw. Pass is complete to the 35. That is Kyle Pitts. They're going to say gain of four. Second and six. That pass is complete to the 29. I couldn't tell who that was. They're going to challenge it, though. I was not able to see who that receiver was. That was George Claiborne. That looks like a clear catch. Does he have possession though? It looks like he does. It doesn't look like it ever pops free. It just looks like he tucks it to his stomach. George Claiborne, the undrafted rookie who the Falcons intended to bring in for special teams as the backup returner to Cordero Patterson, but he slid in here to the, I believe the third or fourth receiver. Chris Warren just barely gets that ball away as he had to avoid a Vita Vea there. That pass is going to be complete to Cordero Patterson up to the 23 for a gain of 5 they're going to say. Going to bring up third and 5 now. Under 7 minutes left to go in this game. Chris Horn looking throw. That's complete to Mark Lesvada Scantling. That's up to the 12 yard line. And that's going to be enough for a first down. First and 10 now from the 12 yard line. Chris Horn gets a snap. Surveying. Throwing. It's complete. Up to the 7. That is Alama de Zacchaeus. I believe I said that too fast. Alama de Zacchaeus for a gain of 5. Second and five. That pass is complete. That's up to the one. That's Marquez out of Scantling. First and goal from the one. No one in the backfield. This is either a pass or a quarterback run. It's going to be a QB draw, and Chris Warren's going to dive in for the one yard touchdown. As Washington currently beat, is beating the Cowboys 31 to 10. The Cowboys got to be getting a bit nervous. Five minute, five twelve left to go in this game. Buccaneers currently, currently lead thirteen to seven. As Las Vegas is currently beating Arizona thirteen to seven. Philadelphia won their game, so Philadelphia is still potentially in for the playoff hunt. I believe Minnesota may be as well. We play to win. So, well, Minnesota hasn't won their game yet. Their game is still going on, but we they are losing by score to Green Bay. So, can't count them out yet either. And down goes Brady. That's John Kaminsky for the loss of 11. Bring up second and 21. Brady's going to look to throw. Check it down to Godwin. That's going to be up to the 32 for a gain of 8. Third and 14 now. Under 4 minutes left to go in this game. Third and 14. Brady's going to look to throw. That pass is complete to Scotty Miller, but down at the 39. It's going to bring up fourth down and six. In the punting units out there. With three minutes exactly on the clock, the Falcons are going to start at the 33-yard line. And Las Vegas takes a 21-7 lead over Arizona. First and 10 now from the 33. Chris Warren's going to look to throw. That pass is complete to Calvin Ridley up to the 40. It's going to be a gain of 
six, they're going to say. Going to bring up second and four now. Well, as long as Zacchaeus was at quarterback, Wildcat is going to be given to Cordero Patterson for a gain of four and a first down. And that's going to take us to a two-minute warning. We have two minutes left to play. The Buccaneers currently lead 13 to 7. Chris Warren gets the snap. That pass is complete. That's a Lamade Zacchaeus, I believe. Up to the 49. It's enough to get across midfield and a gain of seven. And that pass is going to be intercepted. Savante David. And he's gonna is he gonna go all the way? And he is. That's going to be a pick six. And that right there more than likely ends the Atlanta Falcons season. Chris Horn was under pressure from both, I believe, Vita Vey and Shaquille Barrett. Ultimately had to make a costly throw. And that did end up being an interception. He fielded at the six-yard line. And like we've known all game, Falcons, no special team unit. It's going to be down at the 23, even though started off at the 6. So, But with a minute 28 and all three timeouts, the Falcons still do have a slight bit of hope. And Chris Warren is going deep. It's one-on-one. -on -one. And Marquez Valdez scantling couldn't come down with it. Nearly caught. Minute 20 left now. If you're the Falcons, you cannot use a single timeout until you either score... And you need a touchdown. Let's pass complete to Marquez out of scaling. First 10 now from the 43. Chris Horn. He's going to go deep. His man has a step. And it's incomplete. Pass intended for Calvin Ridley. Chris Horn's going deep again. Overthrows him. We have third and ten now. 45 seconds left. Falcons still do have all three timeouts, so they can get a touchdown. Here's quick. Chris Horn. He's going to go somewhat deep again. And that's caught, but out of bounds, they're going to say. In fourth and ten, this is the game right here. This play will decide if the, the Falcons will be packing. And it's incomplete. That is John Hurst, I believe, it was intended for. And the Falcons do have all three timeouts, but they're more than likely not going to get two touchdowns in the span of like 30 seconds-ish. But they can definitely try. Uh, timeout on the play. Falcons first timeout. The loss of one. Second and 11. Are they going to give him the first down? If he got the first down, that is game right there. He did not. It's third and inches now from the 33. And there's a first down. And that is going to do it for the Falcons season. I don't know how the Falcons come from Super Bowl champions to not even making the postseason at 7-9-1. Ridiculous play by Drew Locke. Kind of put them in this situation. If Drew Locke can make any type of throws against teams like Carolina... They probably would have had a much easier way into the postseason, but ultimately, it does not matter because I am the, the head coach and GM of this Atlanta Falcons. And in case you are worried, I can 100% guarantee Drew Locke will not play on this team ever again. Tom Brady was 27 for 30, 223 yards. Chris Warren was 13 for 21, 95 yards. No touchdowns, one interception. Drew Locke was 4 for 10. 50 yards, two interceptions. Horrible. Keyshawn Vaughn was 12 for 38, 3.1 average, and a touchdown. Raheem Mostert, 8 for 60, 7.5 average. Cordero Patterson was 3 for 10, 3.3 average. Chris Horn was 1 for 1, 1 touchdown. Steve Flesley, 1 for negative 3. Tom Brady, 1 for negative 1. Receiving, Keyshawn Vaughn was 7 for 30, Scotty Miller, 7 for 30. 
Mike Evans, 7 for 119. MVS, 5 for 59. Kyle Pitts, 3 for 18. Mohamed Zacchaeus, 3 for 20. Cordero Patterson, 2 for 24. Calvin Ridley, 2 for 7. Chris Conlon, 2 for 7. Caleb Allridge, a rookie tight end, 2 for 26. Cameron Bate, one, uh, 2 for 1. George Claypoint, 1 for 7. OJ Howard, 1 for 10. Keith Smith, 1 for 10. Blocking. Sack allowed by Justin Murray and Devontae, uh, Donovan Smith. Excuse me. Defensively, a sack was given to John Kaminsky and Shaquille Barrett. An intercession from Jamel Dean and Justin Coleman and Levante David. Kicking. Both teams were perfect, technically. Young Goku didn't, you know, attempt any field goals, but both sides were perfect on extra points, and Jason Miles was perfect on field goals. Punting. Bradley Pinion, 2 for 98. 4.9 average. Presley Harvin, 2 for 88, 44.0 average. Kick return. Brandon Armstead was 1 for 16. Cordero Passman, 3 for 43, 14.3 average. Punt return. Cordero Passman was 1 for 8. Brandon Armstead was 2 for 11, 5.5 average. Marlon Davidson has an upgrade. But, ultimately, the Atlanta Falcons are going to be watching the playoffs from home as we'll zoom to the Super Bowl. As we did not get to see the Pro Bowl, I for completely forgot about that. But it's fine. We're not going to view yearly awards. We're just going to upgrade our players, and the Chiefs and Eagles make the Super Bowl. And that's where we're going to stop. We're going to have the suspense. But we're going to beat a playoff record. The Bucks uh, barely beat the, the Seahawks. They then beat the Cardinals. They lost to the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles beat the two-seeded Packers and the one-seeded football team. The four-seeded Buccaneers. That's very impressive. And then on the AFC, the two-seeded Colts beat the seven-seeded Bills. The three-seeded Browns beat the six-seeded Ravens. The five-seeded Chargers beat the four-seeded Patriots. Uh, the Colts, the two-seeded Colts beat the three-seeded Browns. The one-seeded Chiefs beat the five-seeded Chargers. And the one-seeded Colts beat the two-seed, or the one-seeded Chiefs beat the two-seeded Colts. But the last thing we're going to do, we're going to manage our roster. We're going to see if anyone had any dev traits. As I don't see anyone on offense with a dev up. As Chris Horn had star development, you know, he was hidden the whole season, so we didn't really know. Defensively, okay, I can dig. We have two, I believe. We had William Jackson and AJ Terrell both go up to superstar. All right. And I doubt special team wise. Nope. And practice squad. Oh. There is no practice squad anymore. That's right. But we're going to take one last look quickly. Here's all the players we are going to have to choose whether to resign or not. For those of you who are interested. Well, not all of them yet. There's going to be some practice squad players. And you'll find, you know, I believe, I don't know, dev regressions come out this week or next week. But you'll find out the regressions. So, on Monday, you guys will be getting, or, yeah, probably Monday, you'll be getting the the off-season stream part one. I usually break it down into two streams. I usually do off-season, so free agency draft, and preseason game one and off-season. Season one, and I do preseason game two and three in off uh, episode part two. So, because you know, with Friday, I may be able to do it tomorrow because I am recording this on Thursday. But um, yeah, it will obviously have to be after the video comes out, and that will take some time. And also, I won't be doing it this weekend because there is the wild card weekend. So. Hope you guys, you know, have a fun time. If your team's in it, I hope, you know, your team does well. Unless if your team 
plays the Packers at any time. But I hope they lose because I'm a Packers fan. I'm talking about the whole playoffs, not just the wild card. And if your team didn't make it, I hope your you know team gets a good draft pick, you know, player wise. And if your team doesn't have a draft pick, you know, tough luck. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. Remember, the off season stream will be on Monday. Well, part one, I cannot guarantee when part two will be. Actually, I can't even guarantee. Off season stream one could will either be Friday or Monday from when you're seeing this video. Um, tw uh, January whatever. Uh, 2022. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. I hope you guys enjoyed season two. Because I did, even though, you know, we unfortunately went out bad. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.